so first of all, I'm a psychic and I'm a medium. And what it means to be psychic is that I tap into energies past, present, and future. And I can see energy relationships, relationship dynamics. I see the energy around things and where it's headed. And the reason I think that I can see somewhat into the future is because I'm reading the energy of now. And it's like, if this energy stays the way it is now, this is what's going to happen. And as a medium, um, because you can be psychic, but not necessarily be a medium. But if you're a medium, you're using psychic abilities. And you're using psychic abilities to connect to um, spirit, to connect to those souls that have crossed to another dimension. And it's done through um, clairvoyance, which is um, sight, clairaudience, which is words, um, clairsentience, which is feeling. And it's these higher senses. It's done through that through um, messages. Basically, I say, I raise my vibration, they lower theirs, and here we have a window of communication that symbols are used. Um, I, you know, I'm a psychic medium and I do readings, circles, but my real focus in, in my life and in my work is to really you know, help others, to, to inspire and encourage others to kind of connect to their own abilities, their own um, spiritual self, and um, and the and all of the tools around that, the, the the healing tools that I've used in my life that have helped me so much, because I just I truly believe that we're all here to help others, and um, part of that is helping and healing ourselves. I kind of call it it's like a soul yearning, and I know for me um, that's what got me in more directly into this work as I began to have. Um, I guess a soul yearning, a bit of a kind of a midlife crisis, a meltdown where I was like, why am I not connecting to the joy in the world? Why don't I feel more joyful than I do? What's going on? I know all these things and have all these tools. And so what happened for me is I realized that I needed to start to apply those tools <laughs> on a daily basis and create a practice for myself. And as I did that, I really honed in to my gifts that were already there and I was able to develop them and then use them directly to help others in a career as well. I love the philosophy of, you know, we're all here to teach or teach each other and to help each other and support each other. And that's largely what this website is about. It's for people to come together and support each other and connect with one another and to learn from it. Did you get into this when you were in your midlife crisis instead of buying, going out and buying a Corvette or whatever, you actually dove into self-help <laughs> or, um, but your, your, uh, your medium as well. It, have you had some of those, um, talents or some of that intuition? Has that been something that has, that you've been aware of for most of your life or when did that all kind of come about? I actually got involved in holistic health and healing. In my early 20s, I began a journey, a spiritual journey um, at the age of about 22. I, I joke that, you know, I was, my friends were still at the bars, you know, drinking, doing shots. And I was at home doing shots of wheatgrass juice, you know, oh, yeah. okay. to find a natural way of living. And I got involved in a modality that I, that I call very holistic mind, body, spirit. And the spiritual um, teachings and principles were part of that. Also at a, a young age, I had my first child. So I became a mother and a busy with a, with a family. So that was where my energies and my direction was, was raising my kids. I was pretty much a stay at home mom. And with that, I studied all about healing and health and natural, everything natural and spiritual. That was what I did in my part time and applied it to our lives and our living and our lifestyle. I had the things that I had had um, been working for and uh, my children, my family, my home, and my husband, I just felt really disconnected. And so I decided that it, it was time to really take really good care of myself. And when I did what, that- What were some of the practices that you adopted at that time? Yeah, I started to, every day, I set aside time to do something. And what I realized is it didn't matter what it was. It didn't have to be the right thing or the perfect thing. It just had to be the thing that worked for me. There's two things that I start with in almost any class that I teach. The first is awareness. 
and, and most spiritual practices will talk about awareness. Awareness is the first step. You have to start to become aware. Maybe you're not aware at all, but you have to start to become, if you start to do a, a class, then you are somewhat aware. But you have to increase your awareness and becoming ever, ever increasingly aware of, of who you are and what that means. Like what's around, what's the energy around you? What is energy? what you feel, what you hear, not just on the physical senses, but then the, the psychic intuitive senses. Awareness is the first step. And to do that, you, you have to get still. You have to get quiet. You know, you have to slow down. You've got to let your mind slow down and find ways to get it to slow down. It's hard for me to do. So I totally appreciate even now. I mean, it's hard for me to do. I'll start to do a spirit circle. And I'll, uh, the first thing I do in a spirit circle is a meditation. And I'll be like, whoo, I needed that. <laughs> you know, I needed to slow my mind down. Um, the, the second thing is beliefs. Because I think that any of this is kind of difficult to navigate if you don't have a really strong sense or at least some sense of what you personally believe. Like believe about the world, believe about the afterlife, believe like what is the purpose of life? Can you answer that question for yourself? Because if you can't answer that question for yourself, you are likely struggling with times that we're in. So to me, it always goes down to belief. And a lot, of course, a lot of the people that I work with have very similar beliefs to me. But, but I also find that we believe, but then we, we forget to practice. And I, and, I, Lauren, I think the reason that this is is because you know, we've, we've, we've grown up in a time where traditional religions are no longer our guidepost. Many people have rejected their traditional religion or parts of it. They're like, yeah, okay, that's good, but I feel like there's more. Or no, that doesn't work for me. I mean, some people just throw the baby out with bathwater, you know. Um, people are searching. They're searching for that direction, that, guide, that guidance. And we can find it in teachings. But I think the, the one thing that our religion did for us in the past is it gave us a practice. Like you went to church every Sunday. So at the very least, you had an opportunity to sit there and pray, which is a very powerful practice, right? You had an opportunity to be in a place where the energy was, for the most part, and I'm, I'm not, I'm speaking in generalities, where, you know, it could be, a, it could be quite a sacred place. Um, so a lot of people don't have their practices. They don't have their discipline of their, of their practice, which is practice of your beliefs. So that's what I always say to people. What do you believe? Do you believe in love? Then you're practicing love. Okay. If you believe that love is every, you're practicing love. Of course, where we diverge is how we practice, how, what that means and what that looks like. But I would just say that a lot of the discourse that I see, a lot of the even just the, the things people post on their Facebook pages are not coming from a place of love. You know, they're not, <laughs> not honing in to their love. They're not practicing love. So that's what I like to start with. And of course, none of us are 100% of the time. This body and this existence is really only 10% of who we really are. But yet we place like 99% of our attention on it. And I think that's why people get stuck. I think that's why people are in pain is that they're not seeing a bigger picture. They don't have a belief or they might have a belief, but they're not practicing that I'm greater than what I, what I feel like when I'm, what I see. There's much more going on here than what I'm focusing on. So I really truly believe that we all have these abilities and that we have the ability to connect to, to spirit and connect to our loved ones. And it's just a matter of raising your awareness. It's a matter of, of under, and believing that you can and just asking, you know, asking when you said you have things that come to your mind, ask, is that a message from you, dad? Or is that a message from you, grandma? Um, show me a sign and then watch for it and pay attention. Believe me, spirit is right there watching us and, and um, available to give us comfort. They know what we're going through. Every time I connect to spirit now, they're like, whoa, man, I'm super <laughs> glad 
still on the planet at the moment. <laughs> right. And I think I want to just end on that. I really, truly believe that part of why we're going through such a difficult time is because the vibration of our soul group, because we're not alone, is raising so much that things are, are coming up for us to heal at a rapid rate. It's like the ugly, the dark energy rises as the vibrations raise. And I think that it's happening because we're going through what's called the ascension. And I really, I really believe that. So it's actually very exciting. So the next time you feel like, oh my gosh, can this get any worse? You say, you know what? I'm so grateful that we're going through this because as a, as a soul group, we're, we're going through the ascension and what's to come is gonna be awesome. It is going to be awesome. As one teacher said, you will feel a hundred times happier than you're capable of feeling in this human existence when we go through the ascension. So I'm going for that. That's what I believe. That's what I'm going to stick with. <laughs> and I'm not talking, oh, love and light. Everything's love and light. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about taking your thoughts and your energy and finding the good, finding the gratitude. Because wherever we're at in our emotions, we can always go up to the next level. And as we do, we, we raise the energy. We raise our energy and it has ripple effects out in the world. And particularly if, we're, if we've spent a lot of time on our own healing, we become that much more of a powerful manifester. So we have that much more of a responsibility.